Senator Lieberman's love of country is obvious uh, because why else would you do this? Um, there's really, uh, there's no real glory in continuing to, to, uh, to take these risks and continuing to um, fight for these things except for the love of country. And I think that motivates all of us here uh, and is one of the things that we love to celebrate at ISW. And the last thing that I've seen that has truly impressed me and, and always uh, just awakens my, my inner West Point professor is the way in which Senator Lieberman has cultivated young talent. Um, there is a huge cadre here tonight of people who have worked for Senator Lieberman uh, for years, some of them uh, newly recruited to his staff and, uh, and some of them long timers. Um, but, you know, there are really um, few leaders, I think, who have had such an eye for, for talent to find smart, uh, driven, uh, patriotic people with the same love of country that he has and to take them uh, from this world in Washington where normally they would be, well, stuffing name tags, and actually make them into policy leaders that we can admire, who are going to be part of the next generation of policy makers uh, wherever we go. And I just want to take a moment to, to thank a couple of those whom I've worked with and the ISW staff has worked with. Um, extensively over the years, uh, particularly Vance Surchuk and Maggie Goodlander, who have been uh, incredible mentors for all of the young ISW staff uh, on the Hill for the first time, uh, navigating a very complicated political world and just being role models uh, back to us so that we can all do what it is that we want to do here and raise that next generation of, of national security leaders to take on the extraordinary uh, responsibilities and challenges that our nation faces. And so Senator Lieberman, if you would come to the podium and please, uh, John Casey, if you would join him, um, I would really like to take this moment to present the award to you. Now we at ISW have a tradition of not handing off baubles because, well, we uh, know what happens to those. Um, and we also have a tradition uh, at ISW of absolutely loving maps. Uh, we are very, uh, very determined to make sure that you read your military history with a map and that you study your military operations with a map. In fact, one of the, the first things I remember doing is briefing Senator Lieberman and Senator McCain with a big map of Iraq. Uh, and boy, we zoomed all over those villages and got into a lot of detail. And so uh, what I uh, really wanted to do today was to give you a sense of the history of the area that you've studied, uh, worked on, uh, and changed very fundamentally during your tenure. And so the map that we're giving you today, a um, map of Persia, Asiatic Tur uh, Turkey, and Arabia was actually uh, rendered in 1766 by Louis Briand de Tours. Uh, back, back in Paris, he was the car royal cartographer, probably at a, a time that wasn't really good for being a royal cartographer. Um, the kings came and kings went, but happily the earth stayed the same and it was absolutely possible to draw wonderful political boundaries, develop an atlas of the world, and create a sense of where uh, La France fit in the world and community of nations. And so tonight we wanted to present this map to you as, a, um, as our honor to you and our recognition of all of those qualities that you have embodied in your service, intellect, and leadership. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. It's your turn if you want, uh, but the next page is okay. a blank page. So okay. Okay. Well, uh, thanks very much, Kim, and uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Kim, for your really overly generous words. I appreciate them. 
though very much. And um, thanks, John, for, uh, to uh, General Dynamics for being a principal sponsor. And, and I might say, some might think parochially, thanks for overseeing the production of the greatest submarines ever made <laughs> anywhere in the world. <clears throat> that, that incidentally come in ahead of schedule and under budget. You know, all right. Uh, since I had uh, a really ample opportunity to speak before in the a conversation with Kim, I will try to remember those wonderful words that Muriel Humphrey spoke to her husband, Hubert, uh, saying, Hubert, always remember that to be immortal, your words do not have to be eternal. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm grateful to a lot of people here. I thank Jack Keane for uh, his leadership of this group, for, the, uh, uh, for his service to our country, and for uh, all the help that he's given to the three amigos. I, I don't know what the process is for electing a fourth amigo, but uh, you're at, at least in the running, Jack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very honored uh, and, uh, by the presence of my colleagues, John McCain and Ben Nelson from the United States Senate, colleagues, colleagues but really dear friends and great uh, uh, co-workers, and even more honored by the presence of their wives, Cindy and Diane, uh, who are here tonight. Uh, I thank my wife, Hadassah, for, for all that... Uh, uh, she has put up with and supported throughout the years. I, I you know, in 2006, uh, when, after I lost that Democratic primary in the general election campaign, uh, my slogan was, I'm sticking with Joe. They put it on bumper stickers, lawn signs, buttons, I'm sticking with Joe. Remember in New Canaan? So some wise guy in the campaign had a button made for Hadassah that said, I'm stuck with Joe. <laughs> But <laughs> and I'm very grateful that that uh, that she stuck with me. Uh, thanks to all of you who have contributed uh, to this night and serve on the board. And I, I thank you not only because I'm honored by this honor, but uh, of all the causes you could contribute to that make, as I said earlier, a unique contribution to our national uh, security and well-being. ISW is really the best. It's a gem. Uh, and uh, I, I want you to know that I appreciate your generosity. Look, as I end these 24 years of service in the U.S. Senate, the, the most uh, profound emotion I have is gratitude. Um, gratitude to the people of Connecticut who have given me this opportunity over 24 years, which is really uh, extraordinary to me. but. Um, gratitude also for the opportunity that I've had to serve with colleagues like John and Ben uh, and to work particularly on the Armed Services Committee and to serve with those who serve in the United States military. Uh, I believe in America, I love America, and I know uh, with pride how much America has contributed to the world. As we said before, there are hundreds of millions, I, I'm, I'll be exuberant and say more than a billion people in the world today who are living in freedom and uh, out of poverty because of the unique uh, global leadership principle and I'd say selflessness of the United States of America secured at every point uh, by the men and women uh, who serve uh, in the United States military. Uh, the, the people in the U.S. military have given me such uh, inspiration and cause for confidence in our country. We really are unique. I mean, we are a country that was founded uniquely on a principle that uh, every one of us uh, is endowed by God at our birth with those rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And incidentally, the good Lord didn't just give that endowment to us who are lucky enough to be Americans. It's a universal declaration of human rights, which we, mostly through our military, uh, and the service and sacrifice and loss of, of a lot of lives, have expanded and extended and guaranteed for those hundreds of millions of people 
uh, around the world. Um, you know, I, I remain very confident about our future. I think if we have a problem in this country, frankly, it's here in Washington. I think we're just one grand fiscal bargain away from solving our national debt problem and, in my opinion, unleashing all the creative energy uh, and invest investment capacity of this country and, and going on to a period of, of great uh, economic growth when uh, we will be able to support our military so it can support us in the way we want. I mean, would anybody here want to be a citizen of any other country but the United States of America? Uh, you know, I always say, uh, one market test of this is that there's no other country in the world where as many people are trying to get in legally <laughs> and as few people are trying to get out as the, the United States of America. And you look at anywhere else in the world, European Union, China, Japan, India, who has a brighter future if we get it together uh, then, uh, and I mean again in government, than then the United States of America because of all the human talent, all the uh, capacity for entrepreneurship and uh, innovation uh, that we have. And all of it ultimately is guaranteed um, by the service of, uh, and leadership of our military. So to have, to have um, had the opportunity to work as closely as I have for the last 24 years, particularly the last 20 as a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee is really a privilege uh, uh, so great that I can't adequately express um, my thanks for it. And it means that an award like tonight and all the kind words and generous words that Jack and Kim and others have spoken really are unnecessary. They're deeply appreciated. But um, um, my, my, really it's for me to say thank you rather than for you uh, to uh, say thank you to me. I, I suppose the one thank you I can give as I leave the Senate is to promise you in one way or another, I will uh, do everything I can to continue to stay involved in the debates on uh, how to uh, keep America engaged constructively in the world and how to keep our military uh, the strongest and best supported uh, in the world. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>